Welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to talk about the types of antennas used in electromagnetic compatibility testing. And obviously those antennas are selected based on their frequency response, but that's not the only criteria, as many other different things need to be considered, such as the propagation of magnetic fields. And today we're going to look at each of the antenna types and provide a practical example of the test that uses each of these antennas. Before we begin this video, let me remind you that I have a couple of practical electromagnetic compatibility courses available on my website pcb4emc.com. One of those courses is related to automotive product testing and the other to radio product testing. Each course contains over 10 hours of uh, video material and provides a practical example of uh, the testing performed for product compatibility. Uh, please uh, use um, uh, exclusive discount called RF50 to get 50% discount for the radio course and the exclusive discount Auto50 to get the exclusive discount for the automotive product testing course. If you'd like to learn more, please check out the link in the description and use the exclusive discount codes available. Now let's go back to the video. So when we do electromagnetic compatibility measurements in an anechoic chamber environment like this, we must first of all carefully select the right antenna for our measurement. And we would typically do it depending on the frequency that we are testing. So in here, I have a horn antenna, which is, is something that we use for testing the frequencies above 2 GHz. So starting from 2 GHz all the way up to 300 GHz, you would typically be using horn antennas only. And uh, these type of antennas are polarization sensitive. So in this orientation, it's uh, horizontal, linearly polarized. And uh, you can also observe that it has double-reached horn, which is um, a very typical characteristic of EMC antennas because it makes them very linear and very wideband. Then if we wanted to change the orientation of the antenna, we would just simply uh, slightly rotate it like this. And now it's in its vertical orientation for vertical linear polarized uh, operation. So obviously if the antenna is uh, matched to the orientation of the emission or from the DUT in terms of its polarization, it's going to pick up more emission. And that's why we are testing both because we are not sure exactly uh, to what kind of polarization the emission is going to be so we've got to test all possibilities. The other two types of antennas frequently used in EMC measurements are of course log periodic antennas and loop antennas. So let's first start with loop antennas and um, this is a near field loop antenna which you would use for EMC debugging as you may remember and uh, you would basically use it in a near field only. You're not actually going to use uh, uh, far field antenna measurements with this antenna. But um, in a far field measurement scenario, when we want to measure extremely low frequencies, uh, for example, scanning from 9 kHz to 150 kHz, we would want to use a loop antenna similar to this, but it a lot a lot larger. I do not have one here but I have uh, seen it and I'll show you some pictures on the screen. It um, is uh, basically a lot bigger but uh, the construction and the operating principle is very much similar. It's just got a coil which is uh, looped 
And this coil is very good at picking up magnetic fields. So that's why we also use it for low frequency measurement because in the low frequencies, we want to be uh, able to capture the magnetic field as effectively as possible. And remember in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that uh, the choice of antenna also depends on the uh, electric and magnetic field distribution and uh, this is what I meant is that for low frequencies you are typically not really able to uh, perform measurement in a far field for for example 9 kilohertz you can calculate what the um, far field distance is and you will find it's uh, too big so you typically try to rely on a magnetic uh, uh, probe uh, antennas uh, that uh, capture the magnetic fields and um, from that you can basically get a total electromagnetic field. It is worth mentioning that the loop antenna is also polarization sensitive and when you do measurements even with a large one for low frequency measurement you still have to do two sets of measurements one with a front and the other one with the side of the antenna. You may want to move uh, your antenna, so if your duty is here, you may want to position your antenna here somewhere so that it's not directly in front of it. Um, that's the only thing, but um, um, yeah, otherwise it's very similar to uh, uh, working with near-field probes, uh, except you use a much bigger loop area effectively. And let's quickly talk about this uh, log periodic antenna as well. As you can see, it just has a set of dipoles arranged in this way. So they allow the antenna to have very wide uh, bandwidth and therefore uh, pick up as much electromagnetic energy as possible. We would typically use this antenna for measurements above 300 megahertz and up to 2 gigahertz. Again, this antenna is polarization sensitive so you would typically rotate it like so when you want to change uh, the polarization so you capture two sets of measurements and that is actually a very easy and simple to use antenna that you basically see almost everywhere when you think about uh, EMC measurements however it does not work, uh, it does not provide necessary bandwidth I should say above 2 gigahertz where you will want to switch to horn antenna. Similarly in this setup I have also got a biconical antenna uh, which um, is a significantly larger antenna than the log um, and um, is used for low frequency measurements below 300 megahertz and we typically use it to measure anything above uh, 30 megahertz and up to 300 megahertz. So it is a very interesting type of antenna, which is also polarization sensitive. Um, is also quite often used in automotive uh, measurements for uh, basically ISO 11452 uh, to do the uh, radiated immunity. You would typically use a biconical antenna um, and um, you may also want to use it for generic EMC measurements, like I said. Interesting feature of this antenna is if you stare at it long enough, it starts to resemble a transmission line. Because you can imagine a wave traveling sinusoidally and having a zero point in the middle. So it's a traveling wave concept which was utilized in the design of this antenna and that's why it looks a bit weird when you look at it for the first time but if you think of it as a zero point and you have essentially it's a dipole so you have plus and minus but if you have a zero point here then you have a sinusoidal waves going um, in opposite sides of polarity and that's kind of the idea that inspired this design in EMC testing, we also use combined log periodic and uh, conical antennas like this. This is done to effectively extend the operating range of the antenna. So this antenna can test all frequencies from 30 megahertz up to 3 gigahertz. Although after 1 gigahertz, we would still switch to a horn antenna 
and use horn antennas all the way up to 18 gigahertz and above even. So you can see how it's designed in a similar way resembling transmission lines so that it has basically you can imagine a wave going and there's a center point of the wave and uh, of course this antenna is also polarization sensitive so you test both orientations vertical and horizontal very important detail is to always use a preamplifier with any antenna measurement that you do so this is a preamp for under one gigahertz without the preamplifier you will see a very really bad noise flow, essentially. And here is also a few other variants for other frequencies. So, for example, this is a preamp for up to 2 GHz from 500 MHz. And then this goes from 2 GHz to 8 GHz. And this goes from 8 GHz to 18 GHz. So every time we swap an antenna, like this, we use horn antenna with flares for measurements uh, above I think 2 gigahertz and um, yeah 1 to 18 gigahertz can be used and then we have to swap the preamp every time as well here's also a nice loop antenna that we used for measuring 13.56 megahertz so this is quite convenient for low frequency measurements that's what I was talking about earlier Moving on and now back in the studio, let's talk about one of the most uh, frequently used antenna types in both EMC and generic antenna measurements, which is of course the horn antennas. So the horn antennas come in variety of sizes which are related to the frequency of operation and of course these antennas are uh, also polarization sensitive, so in this orientation uh, the polarization would be horizontal while in this orientation the polarization will be vertical so during EMC measurements uh, similar to uh, local antennas we have to rotate them and as you can obviously see the size of the horn antenna will shrink depending on the frequency that it's been designed for so let's uh, have a bit uh, closer look the first horn antenna I have here is designed for the frequency range between uh, 2 GHz and 6 GHz. So it's uh, got uh, 4 GHz bandwidth and this uh, wide bandwidth is achieved uh, because it's using a ridge. So it's a ridged horn antenna. Uh, the narrow band antennas typically do not have this ridge and uh, you can get more details um, about this antenna if you check this uh, web link. Now, um, it typically has a coaxial connector and uh, you basically just uh, uh, place it in the same way you would place the uh, log antenna at the same distance, but uh, uh, initially, so between 2 and uh, 6 gigahertz, you would still be testing at 3 meter distance to be clear. This antenna does not have the reach, uh, but it still has a 6 GHz bandwidth, which is considered wideband. So it is also used in uh, EMC uh, measurements. So when we need to go up to 18 GHz, we would typically move to this antenna and then we will reduce the distance. So uh, starting from about 8 GHz, the distance uh, to, of the measurement uh, becomes one meter. Finally, we have a very small antenna, uh, which is the antenna design for 140 gigahertz operation. So you can see it's absolutely miniature. Likewise, it does not have a reach, uh, but it is very wide band because um, this uh, has the bandwidth from 140 to 170 gigahertz. So almost 30 gigahertz bandwidth, which is quite impressive. This type of antenna features completely different type of connection because a terahertz frequency, and we can consider this as a terahertz frequency band, um, so it's not 0.1 
4 terahertz we need very special type of uh, connectors that uh, basically we cannot rely on uh, uh, these uh, coaxial connectors anymore we need to have waveguide to waveguide type of connection and uh, of course the cable length cannot be large so it will have a preamplifier effectively plugged into it straight away and here is how this horn antenna is mounted on its preamplifier as you can see it's um, 140 to 170 gigahertz preamplifier um, so LNA in other words so inside it's got basically a waveguide very small you can see just about and um, when you mount it you just need to match the waveguide and basically here it goes like this then you just secure it and uh, there you go that's done from this you can obviously see how the antenna size shrinks with the increasing frequency during EMC measurements and um, in EMC testing it's very often that we do need to consider all ranges up to 300 gigahertz the highest I had to deal with was around 140 gigahertz indeed when we needed to test the fifth harmonic of the 28 uh, gigahertz um, uh, signal but uh, if you, uh, for example, use a 60 gigahertz um, uh, signal, which becoming increasingly common those days, then the fifth harmonic of that will be 300 gigahertz. So uh, your lab should have equipment uh, capable to measure up to that frequency. Uh, but the overall uh, system test setup is not going to change. You still have effectively a horn antenna, even though it becomes absolutely minuscule. And uh, then it will have a, a preamplifier block basically so that it's uh, allowing it to capture the measurement without uh, excessive noise flow then you will have a long cable going into the spectrum analyzer or emi measurement analyzer and you will uh, rotate the horn antenna uh, vertically or horizontally uh, for each type of measurement so at the end you will get two types of graphs and you will check them against the limits of the standard that you are testing against another antenna type that is worth briefly looking at is a monopole antenna and a monopole antenna looks exactly like this uh, where the field aims to radiate isotropically or in other words in all directions since the field radiates isotropically this antenna does not have a polarization so you could uh, basically place it any way you like like this or like this and it aims to radiate in the same way however because of this property this antenna is not uh, suitable for directive measurements so it doesn't have very good directivity and uh, as a result it's not used very often for EMC testing except in situations where you may want to connect your user equipment to the radio communications tester which is something I have done uh, in some of the other videos I made on this channel and in these cases you may want to use a monopole antenna to basically imitate a base station uh, because the orientation of monopole antenna will not affect the channel quality of um, the user equipment to base station link uh, which makes it very convenient as you may be rotating the um, basically DUT during the test and uh, you don't want to signal suddenly disappear when the DUT is faced in the opposite direction so that's it for today's video. I hope you found it interesting and you learned a lot about uh, antennas used in EMC measurements. Please like and subscribe to the channel as I will be releasing more videos dedicated to electromagnetic compatibility and antenna measurements really soon. So I'll see you shortly.